Ladies and gentlemen, after that amazing session, we're on to our next segment. For our next segment, we have the seamlessly amazing A-listers here to propagate on creating a seamless omni-channel CXO digitalization and digitization. We have with us leaders. Yes, of course, according to the tradition, as in very take your names. Keep it super short, keep it super brief. Non-tech, of course. Uh, we let you know what the question is once you're up. So panelists include Mr. Dharma Rajan K, the CBO Beauty, Tata Click. Can we have Sir on stage with us? That's our very first leader. Ladies and gentlemen, a big round of applause. Mr. Dharmarajan has come all prepared, sir. Uh, this seems like a face reveal happening on stage. <laughs> Fantastic. We're absolutely happy to have you, sir. So, super brief, super short note. What is the one thing that comes seamlessly, absolutely effortlessly to you? <laughs> we mentioned non-tech, but I, I get it, I get it. This is... <laughs> Thank you so much, sir. Fantastic. Our next leader is Mr. Mayang Jain. Group Digital Customer Initiatives, Aditya Birla Capital. Mr. Jain, please, for my understanding, let's keep it a little long tech. What comes absolutely effortlessly, seamless to you? Uh, uh, fantastic, sir. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Ladies and gentlemen, on to our next leader. We have Mr. Jerome Vincent, Chief Grievance Officer, Bajaj Alliance. Mr. Jerome. So what would your answer be? What comes super naturally, effortlessly, seamlessly to you? Fantastic answer, sir. And of course, uh, the person, the leader with the toughest task, we are moderator, Ms. Vandana Tanna, regional sales manager, Fresh Works. Ms. Tanna has been standing there, giggling, love the laugh. <laughs> so ma'am, every time one of your leaders uh, stuck to a tech answer for a non-tech question, I, I heard a little giggle. So, ma'am, what would your answer be? What comes effortlessly to you? My work, my passion for my work, it comes effortlessly and seamlessly to me. Fantastic. Fantastic. Leader, stage is all yours. Thank you so much. Is this on? Very good afternoon uh, to all of you. My name is Vandana Tanna and I am a regional sales head at Freshworks. A very warm welcome to our three eminent thought leaders who are sitting with me representing different industries. Um, Mr. Uh, Dham uh, Dharmaraj from Tata Click, uh, Mayank Jain from, um, uh, from Aditya Birla Capital and Jerome Vincent from uh, Bajaj uh, Alliance General Insurance. It's my absolute honor to moderate the session. And with that, the topic is already known and is, is, is read there, which is creating a seamless omni-channel customer experience through digitalization. I was reading a Harvard Business Review uh, article which said, uh, brands with the strongest omni-channel customer engagement strategies, they retain on an average 89% of their customers as compared to the companies who, are, who have weaker strategies around omnichannel. With that, it just talks about how important it is for any business to look at the omnichannel customer experience very seriously. Now, what does omnichannel experience mean? It's a different meaning for every industry. Uh, we will go across the room and uh, talk to the thought leaders that what it really means to them. Uh, just a beginning when I, um, from Freshworks, when we talk about omnichannel, it means that streamlining all the customer interactions across multiple uh, touch points, be it online or offline, in a unified way to deliver a consistent brand experience across the customer journeys. Uh, when we talk about the customer journeys, uh, it's, it's, it's the customer expectations that needs to be set. And as we all know, uh, we being the customers as well to some or the other brand, how the ex expectations of some of these customers, they keep on changing. So that brings me to the first question and to our first panelist, uh, Mr. Dharmarajan. Uh, you being the business leader in the fast moving uh, e-commerce space, how 
have customer behavior and expectations evolved over this period of time? Uh, thanks, yeah, thanks for that question and really happy to be here. Um, on the subject of omnichannel, thanks for clarifying uh, the customer interaction. So there are so many definitions, whether it is um, uh, online or offline in terms of retail business is again getting moving towards omnichannel. Uh, in the consumer interaction expectation, whether it is through uh, voice channel, email, chat, uh, social media handles, interacting all of that and bringing that into one unified way uh, for the brand to uh, make sense of it, take in insights and uh, respond back. So there is two different ways. Uh, for us, uh, what's been the journey for the last six, six and a half years of existence uh, of Tata Click as an entity is, um, it's uh, moving it forward, uh, which essentially means uh, at some point in time, about like eight to 10 years back, most of the uh, topic around customer experience was around service and it was reactive in nature, which means a problem has occurred. Uh, somebody has reached out to you uh, with a problem and you then created uh, different ways of solving that problem. Uh, the entire system was built around uh, how quickly can the customer reach out to you, how quickly can you resolve the problem is how it was all designed. Uh, it is the entire uh, customer service unit planning, service planning, everything was around that reactive and you will predict if I am selling 100 products uh, in a particular time frame, uh, what is the number of interaction I expect from customers. From there it started moving towards um, dividing the problems into different categories. Your simple problems to complex problem and simple problem you built in various tools and methodologies to uh, customer to get the answer without having to speak to somebody which is your self-serve mechanism and that's where uh, some of these bots, uh, your assisted self-service channels, etc. started coming in. And we're still solving uh, a lot of uh, simple problems, complex problems where still uh, consumers were reaching out. And uh, companies like us, uh, which is digital native, we started looking at this problem very differently. Uh, uh, this is because we had the ability uh, of doing something which was very different uh, in comparison to some of the old world industries. How do I design the product in such a way that you eliminate the need for customer to contact or you think of all possible situation at the time of building itself? Uh, there are some examples who have done like exceptionally well um, and we are trying to emulate that. When you're building, say, uh, a buying journey product and you know that uh, some product is out of stock, you become aware that what are the possible alternative customer would look for, you provide it as an option rather than creating an interface. So which is from moving from reactive uh, to sort of dividing between simple and complex to becoming little uh, proactive, uh, now we have moved very, very close to predictive. We exactly know what the customer expectations are. Uh, if a customer is buying, going through this buying journey, what to expect? If a customer has bought, uh, say for example, a mobile phone, we can exactly predict uh, what is the probability of that customer reaching out to us uh, depending on so many signals that we get. Uh, very simple one is the moment you place the order, uh, say about six hours later, if you go to your uh, My Account and check what is the order status, whether the product is shipped or not, we know that this customer's probability to call up or reach out to know what the status is, is uh, in certain percentage higher than others and we have a mechanism to reach out to this customer before they get in touch. So we become like far more predictive. Uh, that is a big change from moving from reactive to solving simple problems to becoming predictive. Uh, uh, that is one. Second is, um, nearly all interaction will move from asynchronous mode to synchronous mode. So emails are gone. Uh, emails are only for record purposes and probably uh, being the grievance officer, you will get a lot of those emails wherein you have to record a long list of things that happened. Uh, but in general, people will now expect everything to be responded back in, a, uh, back in a synchronous mode. So you ask a question, even if it's an email, it will be a two line email expecting the answer to come back in next two minutes. Uh, they treat it as, uh, as a chat medium. So we as brands have to move towards that whole model of how you build uh, anything and everything, whether it is your social handles, email, chat, voice, uh, to provide uh, synchronous, uh, real time solution capability. 
So, and we are all preparing and gearing up to do that. That's quite insightful because uh, e-commerce, it touches our lives day to day, right? And the kind of expectations that the customer have and a, uh, that's, that's a very small amount of um, uh, uh, time they would give to a brand to respond. Like the expectations have gone so high. Uh, coming back to the, uh, to the financial segment, uh, the same question I would want to pose to maybe Mayank. Uh, Mayank, what is omnichannel in your organization for Aditya Billa Capital being a conglomerate? Um, and what and how you've seen the customer's expectation evolve? Thanks, Vanda. Uh, picking something, what Dharma just said, right? Dharma, I'm happy that you know you have been seeing the reduction in volume in emails, but that's not the case with me or Jerome. I believe that you know in financial sector, customer keeps on writing. <laughs> he wants to keep a trail of records. Long emails? <laughs> Long emails means trail above trail and trail. <laughs> I have to put an email bot to understand what this guy wants from us. I have to set up a team to respond to him. Certain part is taken care by a bot. Still, I need somebody supervisor because it's financial matter. You never know what email responds to it beyond a point. So anyways, that's one point what our experience is. But what she has rightly asked about omni-channel as a topic, what does it mean to me? Uh, omni-channel, somewhere you have covered it right. You know, when I just see that executive who is an agent who is handling a customer or the one who is interacting, how can I see about a customer 360? What customer's profile is all about? What is he looking at? What has been his past interaction? What is his predictive score? What is his likely mood to be when he's calling up next time? That is something from my side when I'm dealing with the customer. When we go back to customer side, what does he expect? You try calling up, do I need to narrate you anything? Do I need to give my entire background, history, geography at the back? No. I'm expecting you to know everything about it. This is what something we are working towards it. How can I ensure that what customer is coming back to me, I am proactive in it and rather predictive in that so that my customer feels better. What my business feels about Omnichannel? Lot of interactions you guys are having, yaar. Itne sare calls aate hain. Is it leading to anything to us to revenue or not? You always show me good NPS, huh? Where is money? That becomes very critical for me. Then we thought about and then we sit together in rooms. What do we want as an omni-channel? Frankly speaking, we explored 22 solutions in the market. Two things. What is the definition of omni-channel they have? What they cater to? You know, interestingly, we realized in a door, closed door room, we came up with a blueprint. What do I want my customer to be there? First of all, when customer tries to reach out to me, I should be knowing that why he has come back to me. I should be able to capitalize the opportunity of this customer coming back to me. What happens? Branch walk-ins have reduced. I am not a bank. Customer doesn't come to me that often. But whenever he is coming to me, he is coming for a complaint. I am resolving the complaint. I am leaving that opportunity to interact, to engage with the customer, which is what a big opportunity I have lost. I keep on sending spam messages, mails, and all that, everybody. Ye loan lelo, das 10 percent mein, ye 12 percent mein, you have this much eligible limit. Why I'm doing that? I'm just leaving that moment when customer is coming to me. Then I thought of that, how can I capitalize on that moment? This exactly was a point wherein we thought of, while I have a set of channels which can reach out to customer, how can I build an inbound strategy? Let me start focusing on this area. When customer comes to me, am I able to First of all, satisfy him, surprise him, and then can I drive my agenda as well? I give a very basic example. Very often it happens with all of us. A customer has gone to the portal just to pay a premium of, say, for example, life insurance or something. Suddenly, network went off. Something happened in the system. Customer gets frantic because it's a financial transaction. What's the next step customer will do? Either it will just come back to the portal again and then try to see what has happened. The moment customer comes to my portal, it says that, hi, Mayank, I see that you are making a transaction which could not be completed. Don't worry. Here is a link to complete the transaction. I have saved one call to the contact center. I have saved customer, oh, these guys know about it. I have been able to 
integrate and enable my channel so that you know it can just fetch this detail on a real time basis not everything is required real time frankly but say for example there can be multiple use cases i have to do re kyc every 2 years to a set of customers customer comes to me i keep on reaching the customer customer is not there he is not available not picking phone but when this customer is coming to me can i push this particular trigger to him that your re kyc is pending as per rbi guidelines it has to be done by this this date trust me it helps me to augment that particular data for me here customer is happy by the way i can see that there are set of things or there is something offer available for you if you are keen click on it that's it i am not going to do anything beyond this to customer it's not intrusive the moment customer clicks on it it is because integrated with my live bot at the back end and a call gets triggered to the customer that means first thing i have given him a complete space of entering that what exactly he wants to know second i am giving him option in case if you are interested rather than going intrusive and bombarding with smses you go for it third thing the moment you do that my purpose of calling you do can i help you somewhere is there assistance but i have captured the interest of customer that is what is omni channel for aditya birla capital per se this is something as a native homegrown approach we have developed i am not talking about just solution it's an approach it keeps on evolving every time every month we come up with new set of use cases we try to say how can i validate customers contactability use issue how can i augment this data how can i push it but that's what something is <coughs> actually resulting us to something on my existing crm set on my existing tools without playing with anybody can i create an orchestration layer that is what is something we are trying to do is an omni channel for us and i would feel that you know the best way of reaching out to the customer and actually helping him at the moment when he is with me i have his mind share that's the best thing what we have been able to do so far that's 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 amazing to hear uh, because yeah i mean no customer would want to have an intrusive approach where a brand is trying to reach out to them without their consent um, so this is like really nice to know that how do you manage and maintain that kind of a flow within the buyer's journey uh and yet keeping it or giving that space to the end customer um we know that the customers today they reach out to the businesses on multiple channels uh, maybe for the purchase for um, for for um, uh, getting more information or for any service related what's uh, jerome what's your take in that entire omni channel because you are uh, you know representing general insurance Uh, how have you seen this getting panned out in this uh, segment thank you uh, for us i'll just take a step back a couple of years ago we had just two channels and those two channels were you know prominently your call centers and emails now over a period of time we realized that while that is good enough and where the customers actually would want to call us and want to reach out through email they also started stepping into a branch and when they started stepping into a branch there is where we realized that okay customers are coming into a branch they're calling a call center they're writing to an email but all three are not talking to each other at this point of time then over a period of time we evolved we started having our chatbots now again on a chatbot platform the customer comes on a chatbot platform and uh, to the previous example the chat just gets disconnected now the customer has you know very instinctively wants to make a call he makes a call to the call center now again he has to go through all the authentication process and at the same time has to repeat every single thing that he was chatting to the executive on the call now that did not help us either then your social media platforms uh, became very prominent and there we added one more channel now we have typically five channels all five channels are working in silo there is where we realize that the potential of information and the customers who have actually come to us at various touch points we are not capturing it at any single database we wanted to have a complete 360 degree view where irrespective of the channel where the customer comes in be it a branch be it a call center be it an email be it a chat or be it to your instagram i need to see the complete view of what the customer is doing and what he has come for so that the next time when he is reaching any of the touch points he should have a seamless journey and no broken information that is where we are, we are working at this point of time where we are trying to build a platform of 360 degree so even if the customer comes into a branch he should be able to see every single thing what the previous interactions are 
and there's we want to give a seamless experience, not only the buy, but for us, the moment he walks into a branch, it's a request or a complaint, like you know what uh, our panel panelists had mentioned. So for me, it becomes much more imperative because if he's walking into a branch for a grievance and you know face-to-face -face conversations are never pleasant, right? As compared to a call center or an email or a chatbot, that becomes more important for me to supply that information back to a branch, even if he has come to a different touch point. There is where we are sort of working on it right now. Oh, amazing to know because this is what a lot of businesses today are struggling with breaking the silos of the information at the different touch points. And uh, good to know that you are trying to break those silos and trying to bring that 360 degree view. Um, coming to Mayank again, Mayank, how do business strategizes uh, to be omnichannel across this multiple functions um, of sales, marketing, support across all these functions? And how do you think that the customer experience contributes to the business growth? Uh, okay, two questions. Huh? <laughs> the second one is, uh, you know, before that, I think order could have been different. How <clears throat> customer experience is contributing to the business growth? A very good question, right? There is always a dialogue and discussion between management, how it is happening, what is the right balance? I take a step back here, right? And I just would like to say, me as a consumer, what I feel contributes or, or is a fine customer experience for me. Fine customer experience, I, I myself try to do, you know, through a lot of apps, a lot of interaction, then try to see that, you know, what is right or wrong. One, ease of reach, whether it can be a very basic app, it can be just a branch or a phone call wherein somebody identifies me, very basic stuff. And quick resolution means couple of click button journey, right? Two click journey, three click journey, and that's it. I don't want more nonsense beyond a point. That's good enough. That's a customer experience for me. Such an easy thing, yeah. I'm trying to use currently with one of the Aditya Birla liquid app. Very simple app. It does it. The moment my salary comes in, I swipe left. My amount get invested in mutual funds. The moment you know after fifth or before ninth, before my EMI, I swipe right some amount I enter, that comes to my account. That sounds like a tender of financial services. <laughs> Very simple. You know, I, I've been using it. Initially, I thought of whether it's of use. But then I realized if I get liquid funds pay, 6% interest, good. I don't have to bother about anything in that two in days. That's simplicity for me. One, ease of use and resolution. Second piece comes out is very clear. When I can work out on a proactiveness, can I get, you know, I am always looking for my tax statements, etc. The set of customers look at it. Can I not send it in advance? Why do they need to call me back always? Of course, I'm still trying to struggle with a couple of problems in that. But that is what something which we have implemented, but still I get a call. You have not communicated enough to people that you are doing something proactive service for them. Or it's available on your app. Go and download it. People have tendency to call. Proactiveness, another piece. Third piece, very simple. Am I engaging with customer? I may not be engaging enough. Understand one thing. Far and few moments of customer coming to me for financial sector, unless it's a bank. Whenever I come in, I need to try to do an engagement. That's what something I just try to solutionize using omnichannel. Fourth thing, am I able to sur surprise the customer? Am I surpassing his expectation? I'm ex doing extra mile, giving more than what he has looked for. So don't worry. I give you a very small example in this. Uh, we launched Adit Birla Capital as one brand. And in fact, a lot of customer walkings happens in branches. Being into three different regulators, I can't pitch other solution to customer. Life insurance wale customer ko kitni life insurance bechenge. I can't sell him, right? So I need to simply find a solution wherein I can simply ask customer to go for mutual fund or say, for example, health insurance. Fair enough. What I simply did one tweak with my agent here, sir, while he is giving of life insurance payment receipt, one just simple template of Adit Birla Capital. Sir, we are Adit Birla Capital have host of solutions. Whenever you have need, just think about it once. I'll help you out. We did a pilot of it. We received a lack of interest in one month. And you know how much was the conversion out of those interest? 100 CR top line. Lovely. Now, then I realized what is happening to this. You are actually, people are looking for engagement. When I just spoke to people at branches, 
जी सर हमारे पास तो बहुत सारे कस्टमर्स आते हैं वाई डू दे कम सर नथिंग दे जस्ट कम टू चैट यू वोट बिलीव इट हैपन स्टिल आई जस्ट सी दैट वी डोंट फाइंड टाइम इन मेट्रोज बट स्टिल यू विल फाइंड दैट इट इज ऑलवेज गुड टू इंटरेक्ट विद पीपल confidence and trust is the one which is the biggest contributor for my business same it's true for all as well now when i am talking about this entire piece so i realize how am i contributing to revenue okay fine customer is sticking to me that is one revenue part i have a base of customer who is sticking to me he has been contributing revenue time and again second piece something very clear even if a customer comes back yes sir i have got a offer on the app and all i am just going for it that's a kind of a retention right again my engine starts don't worry stay back currently i am sitting at 48% of retention customer who would like to move out by just engaging with them talking with them we have been able to stop him third piece of course is the nps of course how good you are talking about the customer how good are you talk about companies that is again reflecting me trust me nothing is constant here it keeps on refining so that is the business outcome which i can always drive and i show it to the management this is what i am doing this is the retention this is one next part comes as upsell that i kept as a last one but trust me that is also whooping existing customer if i am able to have those three pieces right well my fourth metric also delivers me the output what i am looking at i am not completely driving that pnl with me but yes please whatever is coming out that is coming out of customer experience what we are doing it omni channel strategy to your second question actually helps me here a lot he has said that his channel is not talking to each other when i am talking my inbuilt channel i have an orchestration layer that orchestration layer has got a very good insight i give an example initially when a customer payment failed had this customer called up the contact center the crm would have the same pop up coming up that this customer was trying to make a payment so imagine a dialogue of a contact center guy the way that we have trained him hello mr mayank have you called for your payment related question which you were just trying to make it imagine the customer oh, oh yes customer center can it not be done on the ivr sir we noticed that you were trying to make a payment don't worry it will be done there is a link i am just sending you an sms what happens it's again building up to the confidence and trust of people that's what we are trying to do with omni channel chatbot whatsapp portal app ivr i am able to integrate all of them that's where omni channel has become a integral part of my strategy now absolutely initially i did it once now everybody is behind me you know we would like our journeys to be done and frankly everything starts with a ideation ideation session i have a problem i don't get you know because a lot of email bounces happen suddenly you know a lot of rate changes happen you know in 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 loan district every third day rbi was announcing फिर इतना इतना बढ़ गया इतना पॉइंट दिसपच पैसा है नॉन थिंग्स लाइक दैट सो व्हाट टिपिकली हैपेंस कैन आई डू दिस एंड आई एम फाइंडिंग दैट माय ईमेल्स आर कमिंग बैक माय मेलर्स आर कमिंग बैक व्हाट डू आई डू आई हैव इनबिल्ट दिस पीस इनटू ओमनी चैनल व्हेनेवर इज कस्टमर सी वन आई हैम रेडी विद माय रिस्पांस टू आरबीआई बट एट द सेम टाइम व्हेन कस्टमर कम्स बैक टू मी हियर इज अ वेरी क्लियर थिंग सर यू नीड टू अपडेट योर ईमेल यू नीड टू अपडेट योर एड्रेस दैट्स व्हाट वी आर जस्ट ट्राइंग टू इनबिल्ट that's that's a lot of uh, real time <laughs> real life stories uh, which we got to your thanks for that um, jerome uh, this question is to you so there has been a surge of lot of self service and the automations that has uh, that was caused because of the pandemic and the surge in the volumes of the customer uh, queries what is in your opinion that should um, a business go a path or should they uh, walk a path of self service and automation Uh, because of uh, uh, that brings down the cost or because the consumer behavior is actually pushing the businesses to take that path what is the driving force the driving force is a couple of things one is yes the consumer behavior because if you see during the covid times uh, when there were a lot of uh, reachability and contactability issues a lot of customers wanted to reach out and express you know and i'll talk uh, typically about claims if i have to go and lodge a claims i could not go to a branch probably the contact centers at that point of time was not full throttle and then i had to actually lodge a claim so then at that point of time your voice bots your chat bots then your self service came into existence now that was the need driven by a consumer and at that point of time we adapted to it and we actually went ahead and we launched it and we seen merit 
because we see in the footprints coming across, you know, coming down at the call centers and various other touch points. Now, having said that, I'll give a different example. Now, most of you guys would have insurance or probably, you know, a different kind of, uh, you know, calls that comes in. How many of you actually pick up those calls, which are those automated calls which come on your phones? If it is from landline, no. No, right. You would just want to go ahead and disconnect that because it shows as spam. Yeah. Right. Now, what happens? I mean, there was also a thought that you should reduce your footprints or foot counts. Why? Because the human being is not able to really dial it out. So you wanted some bot. Now the bot starts calling. Now when the bot starts calling, there's a human trust that's completely messed up because all that you listen is, hey, you know, I do see there's a renewal is up for renewal over here, and would you renew it? Most of the customers would just disconnect the call. And the penetration that we seen at that, uh, during those times was far more minuscule than what we could actually see when a human being is actually calling it out. So it's a balance. It has to be balanced because there is a human touch required. While I do agree there's an automation, there are RTAs, there are bots, the human being would always be a pivotal role even when all those channels are orchestrating against each other. Absolutely. Because there's where a human touch is necessary and right. there's where the comfort is going to be. While you have a lot of developments, a lot of innovation that's come to come be there, the human being will always be the center of it. Perfect. Uh, I was being asked one of this question in a CNBC channel, and the question was, will there ever be zero uh, human touch? Which I was also of the same opinion. No, you cannot be. You need to have that empathy factor built in. With that, we started the session with you, Dharma. We will be ending the session with you. So some of the closing thoughts. What do you think are the recent uh, trends that are, that are influencing CX strategy for today's leaders? Um, so yeah, it is, uh, our belief is very outside in. Uh, it is how consumers are expecting and how the expectations are changing. Uh, keeping a very close eye on what is happening in the country, out in the industry, outside industry, globally, uh, where the world is moving and trying to uh, move as fast as possible. Uh, today, the gap in technology and our ability to do what is happening in any other industry or country is fairly less. So uh, adoption uh, is fairly quick, uh, and that's how we believe that uh, try and be what you can do as per consumer expectation. How uh, we think about it is a very top-down approach. Um, and uh, most of these decisions are uh, based on the philosophy the organization or the brand believes in. Uh, what we have something called as tenets. Uh, so we have tenets for Tata Click. We have tenets for customer services, we have tenets for product, we have uh, tenets for each of our function. Uh, for service, I can just tell you, say for example, the number one tenet uh, we have for customer service as a unit is, um, uh, is to obliterate the need for customer to contact. Which means the question that you're asking that we don't want a customer to contact and we believe it's a, uh, it's a defect. It's a defect in the process, in the product, in the system uh, that makes a customer contact us. Uh, and when you make it as the number one tenet, you start, whether it is a product, uh, technology side, operation side, analytics, everybody is solving for how do I uh, take this defect out, which is the number one. And then there are other sort of sub uh, tenets. For example, uh, we call it as, uh, we obsess uh, over a bad experience than a great experience. And what we do is, and this is uh, CEO downwards, everybody in the organization, we spend two hours every Friday uh, going through the RCA of any customer issue. And this is, I'm talking CEO, and we do it as a town hall. Uh, there are departments chosen every week, uh, two, uh, two departments, and any uh, issue, that customer issue that you want to pick up, and we go threadbare. It's about a, a one hour for each RCA, and we go threadbare in understanding what was the reason, what went wrong, where it went wrong, what process failed, where what was the system failure, uh, was there any people, and people will very strongly believe it's a training-related issue. So we have not trained our people to solve for such issues, and from there emanate how you take action, again going back to the belief that it's a uh, defect if a customer has to call you. Uh, and that translates to every single metric uh, that we have. Um, so, so one of the uh, most uh, critical customer experience metric uh, we have is what we call as perfect order. Uh, we used to follow NPS. Uh, there are certain uh, difficulty in NPSs. It's very difficult to percolate across all functions, all teams. 
and it is dependent on consumer to respond back to survey, though we do NPS, uh, but it is not the single metric that we go after. Perfect order is uh, when everything that we are committed to customer happens exactly as per that, uh, the order gets shipped on time, delivered on time, no cancellation, no RTO, and no contact to contact center. So which is uh, the definition for perfect order, and here, Every single part of the function, whether it's supply chain, whether it is category teams or CS, everybody is working towards uh, bringing this number down. And it is for 100% of all orders. So you're not dependent on customer to tell us whether they were happy or not. We ourselves know whether the customers were happy or not. And we have done the correlation uh, for a perfect order, uh, customer NPS is upwards of 80. So we don't have to go back and do any other correlation. We know that how it will work. So our thought process is, is defining things tenets wise, uh, up down, you know, top down, uh, and uh, very strong focus on the right metrics, uh, percolating it to every single function to having a uh, direct impact on uh, customer experience. That's amazing to know. And it's so good to hear from everybody that customer still remains at the center. And uh, omni-channel uh, customer engagement is still important for every organization to look at. Thank you so much for such insightful and real life stories. Um, are there any questions from the audience? Well, all questions answered, looks like. Thank you. I think a great session is, uh, is when it's so crystal clear that there is no scope of questions. And that is how, that is what we think about this absolutely seamlessly amazing session seamlessly amazing leaders uh, ladies and gentlemen a big round of applause for our amazing leaders